the precise definition of a limit. Here is the first one. It says, given the graph of f of x equals x squared plus 3x, this is not a line. It's a parabola. Find a delta near 2 within 0 0.05 of epsilon. Okay. Find a delta near 2 within 0 0.05 of epsilon. All right. So hopefully at this point, you understand that this right here is a parabola. Now, when I look at this, if I'm going to do it without my calculator, I'll end up pulling my calculator out. But like this factors into x and x plus 3, so it crosses the x-axis at 0 and negative 3. So that means it does something like this. The thing is, is this part over here, if I'm looking where x is near 2, I'm kind of looking right about here. Okay, this is where x is 2. But what I'm going to do is I am going to find a delta. How far away from 2 would I have to look in order for epsilon to be 0 0.05 units within this limit right here. So the first thing you do is you figure out what is that limit, okay? If I found the limit as x approaches 2 of x squared plus 3x, what would it come out to? Okay, so this goes back to the previous section. I'd plug a 2 in. I would get 4 plus 6, which is 10. So this is saying, I know already that this limit is going to be 10. But they're telling me that it's within 0 0.05 of epsilon. So do you remember from yesterday where epsilon is? What's epsilon? Where is that on the graph? <coughs> it's with the y's. That's exactly right. It means it's either a little above that 10 or a little below that 10. So that means it's at 10.05 or it's at 9.95. I'm just taking the 10 and adding 0.5 and subtracting 0.5 to find those. So basically what I know is I know that if I can find where this intersects right here, I'm going to be able to find this x value. And if I can find where this intersects, I'm going to be able to find this x value. Okay, so that's exactly what we're going to do on our calculator. Sometimes they give you epsilon. This one they do. The next one, they're going to give us delta. So it's different depending on what they give you, but it's the same idea. All right, so going to the calculator then, I'm going to go ahead and start with y equals. I'm going to type my equation in. My equation is x squared plus 3x. After that, do you see how these two numbers right here would make horizontal lines? I'm going to type those in as my y2 and my y3. Thank you, Alex. So I'll say 9.95. And 10.05. Are you gonna crack off? Or yep, I got. I, I saw the message. I think I lost my phone there. Okay, go get it. <laughs> you you want to leave your bag so you don't have to lug it? <laughs> Thank you. All right, then from there, I'm gonna press Zoom six just to make sure that you know it's where I need it. But since 10.05 is above that 10, I am going to have to extend that up just a little bit. Okay. So I'm going to go to my window. I'm going to go down here and maybe go to 11 instead. Okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry. No, you're fine. <laughs> okay, now. Right now, those two lines, those two horizontal lines, don't they look like the same line? So I probably want to say, you know what, I'm going to change my window a little bit, and maybe I want to, hmm, how can I spread those out a little bit more? Because if I go to, let's see if it will work. If I go from like negative 1 to 10, they still look kind of the same right there. 
if I change my X, I don't think it's going to make any difference. They still look pretty close to the same. Um, my, my concern is, is I still want you to be able to see this. Oh, I meant to do my Y on the weird one. Just with my X instead. There we go. This will be better. No, not a whole lot. All right. So sometimes those lines, because they are, they're only point one away from each other, right? Point five, point oh five plus point oh five is point one. And so what I'm going to look is I'm going to watch up here when the equation is given, if it's giving me the 10.05 or the 9.95, okay? But what I want is I want to know where they intersect, okay? I want to know what X value they intersect at. So I'm going to press second, trace, go to calculate here, and intersect, number five. When I go to intersect, do you see how this is blue up here? That's saying it's on that parabola. Then when I press enter, do you see how it goes to the red one? So whichever the red one is, it looks like the red one is the 9.95. So it's the lower one. And I'm just going to press enter saying yes, that's the second one. And then I'm going to press it one more time. And this right here is telling me where these two, it's giving me this point right here where they intersect. It's what I'm going to steal from it is the x value. Okay, so I'm just going to pull this over here. And that gives me an x value for that of 1.9928498. Don't round it yet. <laughs> okay, sometimes the numbers are so close that it's like 0.0000 is different, you know. Now I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I want to know when it intersects with the 10.05. So I'm going to go back to my calculator, and I'm going to go second, trace. I'm going to go to intersect, number five. I press enter because that's the blue, but I don't want the red one. I have to press the up arrow key until I see it change to the 10.05. Okay, then I press enter. What it just did is it gave us another x value for this one that's 2.0071356. Now, in order to find your delta, remember we wanted it to be close to 2. These numbers are both close to 2. I'm going to take the bigger one, 2.0071356, and I'm going to subtract 2 from it to get 0 0.0071356. And I'm going to take 2 minus the smaller one, 1 1.9928498. And when I do that, I get 0 0.0071502. Do you see how close those numbers are? Delta is the smaller of the two. Okay, so I have to look. What's smaller, 13 or 15? You know, that's pretty much how you're, the numbers that you have to use. And it's the 13, so 0 0.0071356 is my delta. So I'm given epsilon to be 0 0.05, and I just found delta. If this was linear, these two numbers, the difference would be the same exact numbers. Because if it's a line, since it's constant and it's not, you know, sloped in any way, those differences come out exactly the same. This method is asked more often on a squared or cubic kind of function, something with a curve. They're not going to come out the same, but they're pretty close to the same. Okay. To me, I don't know, this is a lot easier than yesterday's, unless you're not great on the calculator. You know, that, that would be the, the bad thing. Yeah. And so um, on the calculator, you just want us to put down like the whole one number Right, so you're going you're gonna to take, you need the whole long number, and you're going to see on one, 
that it goes all the way over to these numbers before it's different. That's why I said don't round it because you never know when it's going to be and you don't have to go back and look at it again because it doesn't save those numbers for you. You know, once you go and you find the second one, you'd have to redo the whole process. It would just save more time. It's not the end of the world, you know. But, okay, so that's when they give me epsilon and I have to find delta, all right? This one here is the opposite. Given the graph of f of x equals 4x squared plus 2x minus 3, find an epsilon with delta being 0 0.02 and x equals 3. So for this one right here, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to find the limit to see what numbers it's close to. So the limit as x approaches 3 of 4x squared plus 2x minus 3. I plug it in, I get 4 times 9 plus 6 minus 3 is 36 plus 6 minus 3, which is 42 minus 3 or 39. What this tells me is when I'm going to graph this, my y-axis needs to go up to 39. You know, so it gives me a little bit of information here. I can, I, I don't have to do it this way. I'll just go ahead and do it on the calculator. I was going to try to sketch it out there, but it doesn't really much matter. All right, so I'm going to start over here, and I'm going to say 4x squared plus 2x minus 3. I no longer need my y2 and my y3 because I don't know those values. That's, those are what I'm going to find this time. And that's the difference between the two types of problems is you actually only have the one equation if you know delta. Okay, It's easier if you know delta. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and you know let me hit zoom 6 to graph it like this. And this is asking specifically when x is 3, which I can't really necessarily see when x is 3 right there. So let me kind of change the graph a little bit. Let me mess around with the window. I need to know when x is, or when y is 39. So I definitely want my window going up that high. Uh, but for my x's, since I only need to know when x is 3, I'm going to say like negative 1 to 5 for my x's, you know, to kind of pull it in a little bit. But then I need my y max to at least go to 39. So what if I go to maybe 45, something like that. Okay. So this would be a better picture to look at. I want you to see the, the reason. This one here, if I go to 3, I can't even see where it's going to intersect. Whereas this one here, if I go to 3, I can see exactly where it's going to intersect. Okay. So this one here, I'll go ahead and delete. So you've got to kind of come up with the picture that you're comfortable with, all right? I did by fives over here, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, 40. So this is my 40. When I take this x value up here to this, it comes across and goes to 39. Like that's what I know, all right? But my goal here is to find epsilon, not to find the limit. <laughs> I'm saying that my delta is within 0.02. So that means I'm going to have, if this is 3, this one's going to be 3 minus 0 0.02, which is uh, 2.98. And this one's going to be 3 plus 0 0.02, which turns out to be 3.02. I need to know if this comes up right to here, where it's going to go over to here. And then same with this one. And then I'm going to look and find what epsilon is based on those two numbers. It's going to be the smaller one, whatever comes out. So I'm going to subtract it from 40 and subtract 40 from it. You know, so that part is like the same process. But here's the easier thing. When you know your two x values, you go to your calculator. All you have to do is say second trace value and simply type the value in, 2.98. And it gives you the y value. So it's a little easier with that that you're not finding the intersection point. Okay, so there's one of my numbers. I'll get it in just a second. 
Um, and then this one here, I'm going to do it again, second trace, value, and this time I'm putting in 3.02. Okay, now let's go and do what we need to with those. So gathering my information and then I'll work with them from there. Okay, so the two numbers are 38.4816 and 39.5216. So here for this one, I'm going to take 39 minus the smaller one, 38.4816, is 0.5184. And this one here, I'm going to take the 39.5216 and subtract 39, which is 0.5216. Whichever one of these is smaller, that's my epsilon. And I think this guy's smaller, right? 51 smaller than 52. So my epsilon is 0 0.5184. Yes? Um, well, on, it's, it's just going to be different. Like, that was 0.05. Like, these numbers are different that we're plugging in, 0 0.05, 0 0.02. Um, we want them to be small, but we want really our epsilon to be the smallest. Usually the, the delta is smaller than the epsilon. Okay. But it's okay, you know. Um, the reason for it, though, is because of how steep this is. That, you know, even though these x values are really close here, this starts getting steeper really quick at this end, and that's why it's making those differences a little bit more. Okay. And like I said, when it's a line, they're going to be exactly the same. But it's because of the slope, how the slope is changing. And in calculus, one of the things we study a lot the entire year is slope. So of all the different types of curves that we have. All right, so what do you think about that process? It's not too bad, right? It's, it's pretty numerical. It's very mathematical, OK? All right, so we have here the precise definition of a limit. <laughs> slide one of 17. The intuitive definition of a limit is inadequate for some purposes. So what we were talking about the other day, it's maybe not easy to figure problems out when they're not linear. You know, because we had to factor those things, you know, like that. Um, because such phrases as x gets close to 2 and f of x gets closer and closer to L, are vague in order to be able to prove conclusively that this limit comes out to 0 0.0001 or this limit comes out to 1, we must make the uh, definition of limit precise. So these are definitely not linear. They're not cubic. They're not parabolas, right? So we do tend to use techniques like this on them because we can just look at the graph and look at where these values actually come out. To indicate the precise definition of a limit, let's consider this piecewise function. Okay, so think about the graph of this function before we even read on. It's talking about at x equals 3. So it's 2x minus 1 except for when x equals 3. That means there's a hole there. So this is a line, right, that has a slope of 2 and a y-intercept of negative 1. So this graph starts down here at negative 1. It goes up 2 and to the right 1. It goes up 2 and to the right 1. And then it goes up 2 and to the right 1. And here's where the hole is. Okay, that is that length. Then it says at 3, it's at 6. So at 3, it's not at 5 where we thought it should be. It's going to be right here at 6. So it's that little match, that antagonizing little brother or sister. Remember? So a lot of people will say, oh, well, the limit, it, it's, five, it's 6 right there because that's where it's filled in. No, it's not. It's 5. You know, both sides approach that y value of 5. So you have to understand, if it is a piecewise function, don't let that little guy antagonize you. Okay, I, I brought him up before. I'll, I'll keep bringing him up, and he will mess a few of you up. It says intuitively it's clear that when x is close to 3 except for at 3, that f of x is close to 5, so the limit is 5. 
But to obtain more detailed information about how f of x varies when x is close to 3, we ask the following question. How close to 3 does x have to be so that f of x differs from 5 by less than 0.1? So instead of saying that it equals 0.1, it's saying less than 0.1. So here's where some inequalities come in. Okay? You remember we had inequalities yesterday, right? That that absolute value was less than delta, the absolute value was less than epsilon. And so here they're starting to now bring this in. So now, f of x differs from 5 by less than 0.01. Is this referring to epsilon or delta? And that's half the battle is reading that question. f of x differs from 5 by less than 0.1. It's epsilon, right? f of x is your y value. They're saying the y value, and not only that, we set it up here, that's your y value of 5 is differing by less than 0 0.01. What that's saying is if this is 5, then it can go as high as 5.01, no, 5.1, and as low as uh, 4.9. It can't get to them, though. It's less than those. Okay? So pretty much what we're saying here, maybe, is f of x minus 5, or 5 minus f of x. You can actually have it either way because of the absolute value changes it to positive is less than 0.1. And this is coming from yesterday's then. This is the same thing as saying the f of x minus l is less than the epsilon. You know, it's, it's exactly the same thing. Oops, I meant to say. I want you to make that connection that it's talking about the same thing. So now, with this right here, what we could do is just like we did on the first slide, we can take and we can pull this over, we can pull this over, we can find where they intersect, and that's going to take and it's going to give us our two values, and we can actually then find how close to 3 does it have to be, it says. We can actually find those. Okay. Um, so let's do it, but then I want to show you something else algebraically with it as well. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're going to go to y equals. The only part of this problem that we need is that this part, the 2x minus 1, because the 6 meant nothing to us. So we're going to type in our 2x minus 1. Since we have our epsilon, it has to be less than that 5 and greater than that 5. We have 5.1 for one of them, and we have 4.9 for the other one. And we graph it. Our y does not have to go up to 45. I'm just going to go to, I don't know, maybe 7. Again, it's really hard to see which line is which, so you're going to pay really close attention right here on your calculator as to what color it is. And it's going to tell you the equation as well. Okay, so I'm going to go to second trace, intersect, which is number five, enter, 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 and it's giving me, oh, I didn't pay that close of attention, hold on. Number five, enter, it's the blue one, and it is the 5.1. Okay, I couldn't tell if I hit it there. And let's do the same exact thing, but not with the 5.1, with the 4.9 this time. So second trace, number five. That one's blue, that's okay. But now I want to change it to the black one, which is my 4.9, which your colors are probably different. So can't necessarily go by color. Okay. So here what we're going to do is we have these two x values. You can see how they differ from 3. This one's 3.05 minus 3, which is 0 0.05. And this one's 3 minus 2.95, which is 0 0.05. Now, the reason I chose this one to do, number one, I wanted to talk about that little, you know, dot that could throw you off. But you see how these come out the same? Because it's linear. Isn't that an equation of a line? 
All right, so I wanted to show you that. I keep saying it, but I wanted to show you that. So here, delta has to be about 0 0.051. Now, algebraically, which let me move this down because this is going to set us up for tomorrow. Do you remember in algebra having like something like this? And solving an absolute value equation. If it was a less than sign, you could get rid of the absolute values by saying, whoops, I say get rid of them and then I put it in. By repeating what you have, but then going to the front and putting greater than the opposite number. Okay, this is how you did this. You started in Algebra 1, you did it again in Algebra 2, you did it again in Pre-Calc. Okay, yes. For some problems, I, not for one through four, but where we're going with the ones for Monday, you have to because there's no other way to solve them. Okay. So yeah, I, that's why I said I'm setting you up for Monday as I show you this. So from here, you add three to each side, and you get one is less than x is less than five. So that is how you did this in Algebra 1, okay? So now the question becomes, you know, could you do it with this right here? Your f of x up above was 2x minus 1 minus 5. And if we wanted it to be within 0.1, okay, we could solve this and we could say, well, 2x minus 1 minus 5 is less than 0.1 or greater than negative 0.1. And then negative 1 and negative 5 is negative 6, right? So I could add 6 to each part. I get um, 5.9 is less than 2x is less than 6.1. And then I could divide by 2. When I do, this gives me 2.95 is less than x is less than 3.05. Weren't those the two numbers that I got on that graph? Okay, so you can do it algebraically as well. Some of you really don't like messing with your calculator. And if you had something linear, it's easy to do it like that. But as soon as you have a parabola or you have a cubic, which is what we are going to have on Monday, okay, then, you know, we, we have a little bit more work to do. Like I said, I'm kind of separating these problems into three distinct days. But I want you to also have this fresh in your head for Monday as far as that skill that you did in algebra. For today, though, you're able to use your calculator to find those values. Questions so far? Okay, next. If we change the number 0.1 in our problem to a smaller number like 0 0.01, then by using the same method, we find f of x to differ from 5 by less than 0 0.01. Provided that x differs from, from 3 by less than 0 0.01 divided by 2. If you remember on those steps that I just did, when we took that and we divided by 2, it kind of split that is what it's saying. Took that difference and divided it. And so our answer would be within 0 0.005. So here it's showing, and this kind of looks similar to yesterday, if you take f of x minus 5 is less than epsilon, if the absolute value of x minus 3 is less than uh, 0 0.005. So they're saying that there is a correlation between these numbers that they're choosing. Okay, notice, and you asked this question a little bit ago, Ben, this is epsilon, this is delta. Delta is usually smaller than epsilon because you're taking epsilon and you're dividing it by two because it's a little above, a little below, you know, and you're, you're taking it and you're doing it within that value. So then they're showing you, well, what if you change the decimal place one more decimal place? 
You see how this moves? So on the problem we did on the last page, epsilon was 0.1 and delta was 0 0.05. You change that by one decimal place, that gets changed by one decimal place. You change that one by one, that one changes by one. Okay. Now it says the numbers 0 0.1, 0 0.001, 0 0.001 that we have considered are error tolerances that we might allow, saying they're within, you know, a small number, and that's what we're looking for. We want a small number. The more accurate of these is going to be the smallest number that we choose. Okay, so when we're looking for less error, more accuracy, we choose the smaller. Whether it's delta, whether it's epsilon, doesn't matter. Another geometric interpretation of limits can be given in terms of a graph of a function. If epsilon is greater than zero is given, which we know epsilon and delta can't be negative, right? They have to be greater than zero. Then we can draw these horizontal lines. And this is what I've already shown you. We can draw these horizontal lines at y equals the limit plus epsilon and the limit minus epsilon. So this is L plus epsilon. This was L minus epsilon. It's easier with the numbers that we use, though. You know, if it was 5 and epsilon was 0.05, it's 5.05 .05 and 4.95. You know, just add it and subtract it. That when you pull this over, if this is the value you're looking for, is this one here, that where this intersects here and where this intersects here, it kind of makes a box. And this box right here says, okay, the answer's within this box. But look at the curve, how much it changes within that box. You know? Its x values change quite a bit. Its y values change even quite a bit within that box. So the smaller we can get this box right here, the more accurate our answer is. And that's what this is referring to here. If we can get these smaller and smaller and closer, but I think the 80 just made the picture smaller, quite honestly. But that's what they're trying to show you. If you can, if you can get into a smaller picture of it, that it's going to give you a more accurate answer. Okay, so they're showing you can highlight this area, highlight this area where they're both highlighted in there. That's your little box that you're talking about that has delta to this side and this side, epsilon above and below the actual limit that you're looking for. So it says since f of x equals x cubed, so we're doing a cube now, minus 5x plus 6 is a polynomial, we know from the direct substitution property, if we plug a 1 into this function, we get 1 minus 5 plus 6, which is 2. So we know the limit is x approaches 1 of x cubed minus 5x plus 6 equals 2. Okay, that's direct substitution. We know that's what it comes out to. And so we use these that we actually can find in order to learn, so that when we have one that we don't know what the answer is, we can use this process to figure it out. And so this should look familiar. If delta, it says use a graph to find a number delta such that if x is within delta of 1, here's the 1, and that's referring to if here's 1, your delta on either side, 1 minus delta, 1 plus delta, then y is within 0.2 of 2. So that's saying if you plug the 1 in, you end up with the 2. But if you plug these in, you're going to be within 0.2 of it. You're going to be either 2.02 or 1.98. And so here's one um, that, you know, you can set up just like yesterday. If x minus 1, these two subtracted, is less than delta, then these two subtracted is less than 0 0.02, or sorry, 0 0.2. In other words, find a delta that corresponds to an epsilon of 0.2 in the definition of this function. So here we have this cubic function. Of course, there's more to the graph than what we actually need. The part that we're really concerned about is this part right in here, you know, where that comes out. This is where x is 2. Is x supposed to be 2 on this? No, x is supposed to be 1. Where x is 1 and it comes over like this, that's where y is 2. So if this is 1 and we're 
0.1 within it, no, find a delta, or 0.2 within the delta. So this is two, we have two point, is it 0.2 or 0.3? 2.2 and 1.98, we could draw those lines in. But here's algebraically. We could also write it where we take the absolute value away and put the 0.2 and the negative 0.2 on either side. Then from there, we could take and we could add this 2 to both sides. Notice they're not combining these together like we just did on the line. Add the two to both sides. It's saying it needs to be between 1.8. Oh, I didn't do that right right there. 1.8. I subtracted the 0.02 again. I, keep, I can't remember that. Or equivalently, this cubic has to be between 1.8 and 2.2. That way you're not changing the cubic function itself. Okay? So here is this cubic function. This is the part we're concerned about. Here's the 0.12. We look at 1.8, we look at 2.2. Continues on this side. I was looking for where they take those. And then from there, you're just going to take and find where this intersects, where this intersects, find those two values. And that's what these values are that they gave. So it's just not doing it on the calculator. I mean, they're doing it on the calculator um, so that you can see that. It's 0.98 and 1.12. So if I take 1 minus 0.98, I get 0 0.02. And if I take 1.12 minus 1, so you take the higher minus 1, 1 minus the lower, and you get 0 0.12. So our delta here is going to be the lower 1 of 0 0.02. So you show that it's within. And this is just then saying, because of this, there we have this. So we could look at other values, too. We could say, you know, well, this one here came out to 0 0.02 on that. Okay. I think we've done enough of them. I think we hit them pretty early on there that we don't necessarily need to do that one. Um, right now, what you could do is you could do these problems on the homework. But it's not due till Tuesday at the beginning of class. On Monday, we'll cover these last two. But if you wanted to get a head start on it, you certainly could. Okay? 